Canupium, welcome to Tomaquag Museum's 17th Annual Honoring and Cultural Showcase. Tomaquag Museum is blessed to be an Institute of Museum and Library Services 2016 National Medal winner and Rhode Island's only Indigenous-led museum for 62 years. This year, Tomaquag Museum is celebrating Indigenous women, reflecting on the impact of matrilineal societies and the influence on the women's suffrage movement and the 19th Amendment, giving women voice and the vote in the electoral process. COVID-19 has changed a lot for all of us, but despite these new challenges, we're all moving forward in new ways. Tomaquag Museum's Indigenous Empowerment Network is committed to uplifting Native people, and that includes honoring remarkable Indigenous women from across Indian country. Throughout this week, we will celebrate the lives, achievements, and impact these amazing women have contributed to their families, communities, tribal nations, and this country through arts, literature, activism, scholarship, business entrepreneurship, and ingenuity. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate these incredible Indigenous women. Thank you to our funders. The New England Foundation for the Arts, the Rhode Island Council for the Humanities, the United Way, and the Rhode Island State Council on the Arts. You too can support the Tomaquag Museum by making a tax-deductible gift today. Just visit our website at tomaquagmuseum.org slash donate. Thank you for joining us this evening and for your ongoing support. We hope you enjoy this evening's program. Tonight's cultural performance has been sponsored by Dr. Sandra McMillan, the Hafenreffer Museum of Anthropology, and the University of Rhode Island Office of the President and Office of Community Equity and Diversity. Thank you for your ongoing support. This evening we have a very special performance by the We Are the Seeds Dance Troupe, a special song composed just for tonight's honoree by her nieces, seven-year-old Hart Rose, with leads sung by five-year-old Star Bear. Dove Entrepreneur Award celebrates the legacy of Narragansett matriarch Elena Dove as an entrepreneur sharing Native culture through cuisine and traditional arts through the founding of the Dovecrest Indian Restaurant and other businesses. This award celebrates the contributions of business leaders today that share Indigenous culture through their entrepreneurial spirit. Taylan Ogoyo is being honored for her entrepreneurial spirit in public relations, marketing, design, film, and television. Founder of the Indigenous Fine Art Market, producer of East, an Indigenous art show, and director of We Are the Seeds of Culture Trust. We celebrate her commitment to amplifying Indigenous voices through the arts. Please join us in congratulating this year's honoree, Taylan Ogoyo. Thank you, Loren, and thank you to the Tomaquag Museum for this incredible honor. My name is Tylin Ogoyo, and I am the daughter of Chin, 
and Wen Wu, and I am the mother to four beautiful boys, Kui, Teo, Luca, and Micah. And my partner's name is Herman Ogoyo. I'm the director of We Are the Seeds of Cultural Trust. I'm also an actor and an artist. And my father uh, is artist Chin. Um, and I, I've spent my whole life around art and artists because of him. So when I was growing up, I probably was about four years old. We lived, um, he went, he was at school at RISD and I would go to classes with him. And I, I would, I have distinct memories of setting up gallery shows, uh, meeting his professors, <laughs> you know, I, I, it's very funny because I ver have very early memories and a lot of times people think like, you can't remember that early, but I really do have very vivid memories of my childhood traveling with my father to different art shows, uh, making art. He was always very um, generous and kind, like sharing work with me and having me participate while he was working in the studio or in in the dark room that we had in our in our attic. Um, so my life was, I was surrounded by art all the time and, and other native artists. So I think that um, it really had a very big impact on me. And it's interesting because I didn't actually go through my life thinking I want to work in native arts. This is what my, this is what my path is. That wasn't on my mind at all. It only occurred to me after I went through many life stages, as we do, um, that when I started working with Native art organizations, I realized that everything, all my experience from the past really made what I did, um, my work, was informed by everything that had happened in my life in the past. And I thought, wow, everything has just come together and it all, it all kind of makes sense now. And just me being an artist myself, um, so being representing as an, an artist and also representing as someone who supports artists, is, it's just an interesting way to do this work because I, I think that I have a lot of different perspectives to bring to try to make, um, the work positive and impactful. I had a lot of jobs growing up. <laughs> so when you're the daughter of an artist, you're actually working all the time, no matter what. And it's, it's uh, we always joke about it, me and my sisters, because it was, always, whether it was like getting ready for a powwow or a show and some beading had to be done or so it, Maybe we're not considering that official, you know, 1099 W2 jobs, right? But those were, we were working. We, were, we all worked together as a family to make sure that our family would thrive. Um, and then when I went into high school, my mother actually worked uh, as an executive in a, a baby clothes manufacturing firm. And I worked there during the summers. And it was really an incredible experience being in the corporate world. Um, I think it gave me the experience about working with numbers and understanding what, what is necessary in order to make a successful business and how to work with clients and how, how all of those things are run. Um, and then when I left college, I went to LA and pursued acting. And so when I think about what was my first big job, like that, that was my first career was as an actor. And that's all part of it. It all works together. And I'm still doing that work. Um, everything's really intertwined with what I do. Everything that I've done in my life, even if I've kind of gone off this path to something, you know, to sometimes you go off the path and, and, you just have to explore something and you're not really sure why, it always kind of weaves back in and makes sense when you look back on it. I would have to say the pivotal moment that led to the journey I'm on was, um, I had been working for a native arts organization in Santa Fe and uh, things had not 
gone well. And I felt like I couldn't in, in my own, to be true to myself and to live life, to be able to wake up in the morning, I couldn't be in that space anymore. And um, it was a really difficult time. And, and it, there's a lot of layers to the story and it's very complex, but the takeaway from that is it pushed me to do other things. And I didn't know where I was headed. I just knew I couldn't be there. I knew it was, it was not safe and it was toxic. And I knew that I deserved more. And I knew that there was work that needed to be done that wasn't being done. And I wanted to, I wanted to, to do it. <laughs> there were things that I wanted to make happen. And so I was on my path and it, you know, it, it starts off really, first of all, you're coming off of something that's very difficult and then you're starting fresh. And then of course, uh, it was, it was very public. So everyone had an opinion. So you have people supporting you and people who are not, and you're trying to wiggle your way out and try to figure out where do I belong? What am I doing? And it's just what I learned at that time was that it's every day you wake up and you do the work and you just do work and you work and you work and, and eventually you start building something, you know, and it's, it's, so um, it's powerful when you start building something and it, it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, what the outside world thinks like, oh, I made a million dollars or, you know, it's not, it's what, what I value is that if I did one event and, and there was impact and people enjoyed it and we had a good time and there was joy and the energy was there and, and we felt good and it was positive, then that was like an accomplishment for me. And that's all I needed. And I, and financially it was a struggle, you know, there was just a lot going on at that time, but it, that, like I was saying, it's just like that difficulty pushed me to work really hard to make um, what we're working on today. Yeah, what I'm it's most proud of is First, my family, I'm, I, I, I beam, I beam about my family because I feel like we've come so far. We've been through a lot and we're finally at this space where we're kind of getting settled. Um, we're in our new home and we're settled in Philly. We've been here now five years and it feels like this is where we will be for a while and, uh, everyone's feeling there's more balance and peace. And that makes me really proud that we, we got here. Um, and then with my professional life, and this goes back to the last question, it's been a long road and um, we're still on it. You know, I, I, I feel like I'm just beginning with We Are The Seeds, I think in Philadelphia, we're we're really just beginning. And with my other work, photography and acting, it comes and goes because there's not, it's always a part of my life, but it, I can't put that attention on it all the time. But I'm proud that it's all there. I'm proud that my life is filled with all these different passions that I have and that somehow I can, I can make it work and maybe not all at the same time, maybe, you know, and the same thing about, you know, being a mother, right? So that's, that's a huge part of my life too. So I have all these different, different pieces in my life. Um, it makes me really proud to know that I've figured out a way to, to find balance and to move forward. And um, that being said, it's not always easy and uh but the fact that when difficult times come up I know that I can I can get through you know that I've I've found the tools for myself where I where I can just like okay 
I'm going to make this work. <laughs> it's going to work. Uh, so that's, I'm just, I'm just proud of hanging in there, honestly. I really, I am, I'm proud and I, I'm grateful to be here. There was a project I worked on a few years ago called the Warrior Project, and it was a photography series of um, Native children uh, talking about um, environmental stewardship and their land and how they felt about what was happening with their land, uh, what, what they were doing to try to protect it, what they felt like um, needed to happen going forward. And it was, it was an incredible project. I traveled to, um, I believe it was four different states and we took these gorgeous photographs and made videos and it, it got worldwide attention. There was, um, the photos were on, on websites in Australia and in Spain. And I felt like it was, not only were the photos beautiful and the people who were part of the project were just, the youth incredibly powerful. They had so much to say and it really came across in the photographs, but I felt like it was an elevation almost of, you know, it told the story, it told what, it, it, it It showed the weight of what is going on in the world and why we all need to pull together to make sure that we're taking care of this earth. And um, I thought the way we told the stories through the photos and the videos were very powerful. Um, and I was really proud of that project. And it's so interesting because it was several years ago and, and then that project kind of finished and, and, um, and that was thanks to funding. I did a Kickstarter and I got a lot of funding for it. And so when we were finished with that, um, but the, the photos keep coming up and people ask for them and, and they, they just keep having an impact. They're, they're, really, they're really beautiful. So that's, some, that's a project that I'm really proud of. And I, I, it was just an idea that my son and I had, and we went out where we said one day, let's go shoot this. And we shot it. And that just formed this whole idea and this whole project came to be from it. And um, it was pretty amazing to see how that happened. Uh, and that it's, it's had so much impact in the world. I'm the That's one of I'm the co-founder and one of the directors of We Are the Seeds of the Culture Trust. And uh, we initially started this organization to produce a show in Santa Fe, New Mexico at the Santa Fe Rail Yard that takes place every August during Indian Market Week. Um, we were supposed to have our fourth year this year before everything happened due to COVID. Um, so the organization started because there was a need in that space to create an art show um, event gathering celebration that um, in that space. So it's been an incredible journey, but I live here in Philadelphia. So what I, after having moved from Santa Fe and being very immersed in the art world there, um, and then coming to Philadelphia and producing the show in Santa Fe, but it's been really an interesting experience. So that, that continues on, but living in Philadelphia, I really recognized that there was a need, um, wow, a big need. I, there, is, there is such a lack of representation of native people here, native stories, if we're talking about, I mean, talking about history, but even contemporary native um, folks, like it's, there's, just so little representation. And when I moved here five years ago with the um, intent of focusing on the Santa Fe show, the need, when I recognized the need here, it became 
very clear to me that my work was very important. It was very important for me to do the work here. And so it's a very different place. Whereas in Santa Fe, there's a lot of artists. It's an art, it's an art community. And there's generally an understanding of, of native people to an extent in native art. And here it's very different. And so we've been going to, uh, I've been hiring performers to go to schools. Um, we've been doing a lot of assemblies, camps, and um, even to businesses and sharing our culture and, and sharing our history and actually reteaching the things that people have learned in school that are not accurate. Um, and it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting journey because it's so different than my work in Santa Fe where uh, I'm working with artists and an artist will have a, a beautiful piece of pottery and it sells for you know $10,000 and everyone understands and there's no explanation. And, and then here, when we had a One Day We Are The Seed show it wasn't really focused on the art and it was more focused on the programs. And I knew, I knew that regionally this was going to be different. And so there were some artists present, um, but understanding that it wasn't going to be really about purchasing art or collecting art. It was more about the education. And that's what we've been focusing on. We've been focusing on education. Uh, we've been partnering with uh, places like the Free Library. Uh, we just did an incredible live paint event with music from um, DJ Celeste Whirl, who actually just sent us a playlist virtually. Um, and we did a live paint on Sunday at Drexel University. And it was phenomenal. And to take up those spaces as Indigenous people and, and claim them for the day or whatever, you know, and, but now those murals actually live there. But um, it's very exciting because that's the work that, to me, that's the representation is so important, whether it be, you know, whatever type of art it is, it's the representation is important. Us being there is important, us saying who we are where we come from, what we're about is really important for people to be able to see us and understand that we, we, we are here, we exist. And especially in Philadelphia, which, you know, is it's the tourism, it claims birthplace of America. There's this whole old city area where you walk down and, you know, people are dressed up like Ben Franklin and Betsy Ross, and there is not one nod to native folks. And you think, that's pretty offensive, you know? I The only thing I would walk through and I would walk down and the only thing I would see were these, actually the, was at an old church, there was a cemetery and there was a little, uh, what do you call it? Like a thing where they write, <laughs> you know, where they write what's happened in the history. And, and it was, it was not the right history. It was, they spun that really well. <laughs> Something about how uh, seven native chiefs came and they died, you know, and they made it so like, oh, oh you know, it's so, it was so like nothing to them. It had no weight and it gave them no respect. And that really, was very profound to me. Like, how am I walking through here? And there's no acknowledgement. And because when I walk through Philadelphia, all I see people, I see it, you know, before, before all of the, the terrible things happen. Be part of this. And, you know, this is extra personal for both of us mm -hmm. um, in that it's my grandmother, your relative, um, and that we could walk in her shadow, which is so giant, and the things that she inspired us all to do. Um, she didn't tell us what to do. She showed us what mm -hmm. you do. 
and how, how you walk in the world with grace, which I think that you do Thank and you. how you show your strength by your actions and your leadership by what you do. And so, you know, we're thrilled, absolutely thrilled to have you um, receive um, the Eleanor Dove Entrepreneur Award. So I would like you to follow that with just telling us, you know, how you feel about receiving this award and, you know, the impacts, the feelings, anything that you'd like to say about that. I'm getting a little, <laughs> I'm getting a little choked up because when, Lauren, when I, first of all, throughout my whole life, I've always had the fondest memories of being at Dovecrest and around your grandmother. And, um, and what you're talking about, the entrepreneurial spirit and how she showed us. And that's absolutely, absolutely true. You know, I think I spent a lot of my time there when I was like maybe just born till five or six years old. And we moved to New York for my mom to work when I was about seven or eight. And it was like, first of all, the biggest shock of my life <laughs> to move to Brooklyn. But I always look back at that time spent at Dovecrest and on that land and with you, you all as being so safe and so connected and so loving. And um, I always, so I always remember going into the trading post, right? And the bear rug, it was always so fun. <laughs> It was the funnest thing. And then there was the whole thing of sweets right there with the, um, there were the sticks, the candy sticks. And Aunt Eleanor would always, I could always have one. And then I remember like maybe being older, going into the restaurant and seeing like um, Lori working. And um, if I'm remembering correctly, cause I was young. But just like, I remember someone was carrying plates and like there was all, there was everything, there was so much action. And, and then even seeing the bar, like there were native people everywhere and it just, and it felt so joyful and positive and I loved it. Like I just, I, when I, it, how many years ago was that? 35 years, more, more than that. Um, but I have that feeling like, and, and I can, I can picture, I can picture being in that space. Um, so when you called me to tell me that I, I was winning this award, it just, it had so many layers of meaning for me because I just, Aunt Eleanor was just this gorgeous person and um, they, and, and Uncle Ferris, like they did so much in the world, like they brought so much to the world. They, 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 and they did it so gracefully and they did it graciously and they were able to break down barriers by just doing what they do best and doing it so well and beautifully. And that has had such a profound effect on me. Um, and just the, um, just the care, you know, the care and the kindness and the welcoming is something that I'll never, I'll never be able to like, I'll, I mean, I'll always carry that with me. And so this award is huge. I, I still think, um, I'm still processing. I don't really, I, I, I don't think I fully processed the, the enormity of this um, and what it means to me, but I'm really grateful. And um, it's really special. Like this is the highlight one of, I mean, aside from my children being born, this is one of the highlights of my life. So thank you to everybody. And thank you for whoever, everybody who nominated me or supported um, because it means so much. It really does. There are, there are so many people that have been so supportive along the way um, that have enabled me to do the work. 
Um, but, but I really want to thank my family, um, Herman Agoyo and my children, Kwe, Teo, Luca, and Micah for understanding the late nights or mom packing up and having to run to an event early in the morning and really understanding that we're building something here that's important and making an impact. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for them and I'm grateful for their support. And, and Herman <laughs> never questioned, you know, a lot of people love me. A lot of people care about me and, and they were always, there's always a bit of concern. <laughs> like, are you sure you're doing the right thing? <laughs> And he never questioned. He always just was behind whatever I said I needed or wanted to do that I thought made sense for my work. And I, I hardly ever say this, but I, I, I appreciate that so much. It, it's a quiet support, but it's always there and it's really beautiful. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful for my friends and, and, and family and our artist community and everybody that supports. So thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. We hope you will return tomorrow night as we celebrate our next awardee. And you can help recommend a future honoree. Just visit our website at tomaquagmuseum.org nominate and let us know who you think deserves to be recognized. Thank you again to our funders and sponsors that made tonight possible. Don't forget to visit our website to view the program of this week's honoring events, check out our virtual silent auction, and please consider making a tax-deductible donation to support the Tomaquag Museum. Pishkanash ni Tampawag!